Hi there, Mr. K from Santa Ana High School doing yet another instructional video on Fire Dance by Soon He Newbold. And this is of course for the viola. So I'll play it straight down and then break it up into chunks. <laughs> piece to play um, and the viola part is pretty challenging there's a lot of high threes so funny things with rhythms uh, and then a lot of string crossing and blocking fingers to make things easier so uh, first of all the beginning when we start from the beginning the fingers should be blocked so that it's on both strings so not just on the G string, not just on the D string, but you would set your first finger so it's on both strings. And that way all you have to do is rock your bow back and forth. <laughs> that I'm not lifting the finger and then that way I can just make sure I play the right notes and not have to worry about hopping back and forth. It would be very um, messy if we did it that way. So and the way you 
you can count this. So typically 9, 8 should be 1, 1, 2, 3, or sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Or the way I teach my kids is 1 lolly, 2 lolly, 3 lolly. But in this case, uh, the way it's broken up, and you can see the way the eighth notes are being beamed, it would actually be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 lolly. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 lolly. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 lolly. This creates a very uh, disjunct feel, a very um, irregular beat. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 lolly. 1, 2, three, four lolly. And then sometimes it's placed on the different beats. So if you take a look at measure eight, it's one, two lolly, three, four, right? One, two, bum, bum, ba, rum, bum, ba, rum, bim, ba. Giving this upward feeling for that fourth beat, which makes sense because we want to make that fourth beat like a little bit less than the downbeat and it'll kind of propel it into the beginning. And that's how we should play it. Right, always bringing the first note out, not the last note, right? That would be wrong. seven fourth fingers when it's marked. Uh, it would be silly to be doing some awkward string crossings when you don't need to. Obviously this piece has a lot of string crossings back and forth, but if it's easier to get the fourth finger down than that open D, then I would strongly encourage you to do so. Do so. And then your first finger is still there. So. Uh, measure 17 to 21 is pretty much the same as 13. Uh, when you get to 21, we have to really keep our first finger down on the G string and D string again and keep it there as we play the rest of it. So, right? And then that open D, obviously you're going to have to lift. And then same thing. And then the end of 22. Make sure you just give a little stretch to that second finger so it's high. Right, and then rock. So that would take a little bit of practice. Right, and then 23 and 24 are exactly the same as the previous two bars. So once you got the first two down, then the rest of it's good. And it comes back later in the piece, so I would spend the time, chunk it out, practice those two bars, get really good. Measure 25, we're now at the high threes. And then the next two bars are the same thing, so just be careful. And then also be very careful about the bowings as well. Uh, 29. Right, make sure you put in that diminuendo there. Notice I'm not using a whole lot of bow. My sound is really controlled by the weight. Uh, and then if I'm getting softer, I'm using less and less weight. So from 31, this is the tune. Violas have it only, I believe. And you gotta make sure you play it out, even though it's marked piano. So don't be too shy, but then don't be overwhelmingly loud. Um, if in case that we don't get a good balance, then I, the conductor might ask you to play out even more than what's marked. But know that it is the melody, and if you can't be heard or you can't 
um, you can hear the rest of the orchestra over you, and you need to make sure you're playing that out more. So confidence, practice it. Um, there's not much to it other than uh, the same kind of rhythm patterns. <laughs> Be careful when to use your fourth finger. Try not to be doing open strings and then crossing back and then right back to the open string. If you can set your fourth finger so that you're playing at least a couple notes on the G string so that you have time to get your bow acquainted and then uh, rocking back for the rest of it, that would be ideal. For instance, in measure 32, you have, you can easily do just one note. But I prefer to get a couple. So use that fourth. Or the fourth finger will actually be a little bit safer. And then. 35 kind of feels like you have the tune, but you don't. Um, so this is harmony, and the harmonic part can come down a little bit more. So just be aware that if it's the harmonic part, the, the, not the melody, then play those softer so that the mel melodic lines can come through. Um, do be careful that it is B naturals. Don't think that we need to be doing B flats just yet. At 39, back to the theme. That rhythmic theme. And then 43 is that same idea. And that's why you chunk that out and get really good at that. Uh, 30, 47, do be careful, high threes. Right? One and two and three and four lolly, one, two, one, two lolly, three, four, one. Right? Do be very careful how you're counting in there and that you're really focused on your rhythm. <laughs> And 49, it's actually the more interesting part. You share it with the cellos. So violins have these accompaniment figures up high. You can pull, uh, they can play that out, but know that the, the bass line, which is what you're playing, is more important. So I would bring this part out at 49. Uh, try and use your fourth fingers instead of open Gs. Do be careful of high twos. Make sure that those twos and threes are very, very close. And then 57, um, we get into that true 9-8 part where everyone's doing this together. One lolly, two lolly, three lolly, one, two, three lolly, one. Fourth fingers to low twos, you have to practice the stretch. Make sure it's right in tune. And then going from fourth fingers to low ones, that could be challenging. So make sure whenever we do that low one that you're stretching back. You can think like a scissor back. So make sure your first finger goes back, not the whole hand, because you need to be able to stretch that fourth finger and get it up there. Um, and then we come back to the theme at 67, uh, but let's see, um, when we get to measure 69, you will have to practice both parts because you don't know if you're playing the top or the bottom. Um, so. <laughs> It's um, 
again, more interesting part is the it goes with the baseline, so it should be played out. Uh, and then at 73, be careful of the key change. Although we don't really see too much uh, implications till later, it is B flat, so no more B naturals on the A string or on the G string. So G string has to be low twos. Um, 73. Just try and keep that second finger down because you know it's a reoccurring note, right, for F natural. Especially when you get to 74. Lock that third finger and your second finger down. Third finger on the G string, second finger on the D string. Right? That's going to make life a lot easier, is keeping fingers down. Uh, and then... 77, similar to what we've done before, it's just in a different key, different notes. Uh, 81, notice it's the same thing. Except you're a string lower, right? Uh, 85. Try and show the dynamic contrast, crescendo through all of measure 86. Each note has to get louder, right? And then really dig in on those accents at the end. So hopefully you found this somewhat informative. Uh, a good way to practice is in chunks. So really break it apart to what's challenging. Some, usually it's something we know to something that we don't know. So practice all the stuff that we do know. And then if there's something that you don't know, just practice up to there and keep working into it. And then eventually, that part that you don't know becomes something you do know, and then you can play it straight through. So good luck, and happy practicing.